वेलकम टू वीटीयू टी यू ई शिक्षण प्रोग्राम मै सेल्फ डॉक्टर वीरेश तोटप्पा मगलद वर्किंग एज प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री तोंटदार एकॉलॉजी ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग गदक इन अवर प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द पॉलीमर्स पर्टिकुलरली कंडक्टिंग पॉलीमर्स दर इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट ऑफ कंडक्टिंग पॉलीमर्स synthesis of uh, polyaniline and mechanism of conduction in polyaniline and properties of polyaniline and applications of polyaniline in our previous class as well as to little extent uh, we have understood uh, you know what are biodegradable polymers also today we are going to discuss about uh, biodegradable polymers and uh, particularly polylactic acid its uh, synthesis properties and applications later if time permits we will be studying the nanomaterials here synthetic polymers they are uh, nowadays extensively used for the day to day purposes synthetic polymers are having much of the say uh, utility and uh, therefore they are you know widely used uh, in variety of uh, forms right from the carry bag to table chairs and tables and vehicular parts etc but uh, what are the disadvantages what is the main disadvantages associated with this uh, uh, synthetic uh, non biodegradable polymers is when it is uh, completely utilized okay it won't undergo degradation so when it doesn't undergo degradation okay so it has to be burnt and uh, if you burn there will be the emanation of or release of carbon dioxide gas which is an obnoxious and global warming will be occurring due to the excessive carbon dioxide therefore nowadays in order to alleviate this problem and uh, to have the comfort on par with these synthetic uh, polymers we have to go for the biodegradable biodegradable polymers okay so what are biodegradable polymers let us uh, say try to understand okay about biodegradable polymers all biopolymers okay which are uh, say available from the nature are having the biodegradable property okay so some are uh, synthesized though they are available in the nature they are not available in the form of a, say polymer they have to be synthesized example poly capro uh, uh, polylactic acid is one such uh, example and uh, here they they will be undergoing degradation either by direct uh, oxidation process or by the organisms okay so hydrolysis also one of the mechanism okay in which you know we will be having uh, the biodegradation we will be seeing the biodegradation of the polymer okay so ultimate products always formed after biodegradation okay is uh, carbon dioxide and water and sometimes if uh, there will be the formation of uh, methane due to non availability of excessive oxygen and uh, that will also ultimately undergoes oxidation or degradation you can say okay to form carbon dioxide and water itself then <coughs> we need to understand few of the basic uh, say things of associated with uh, these biopolymers okay first of all is uh, all naturally occurring uh, polymers or biopolymers okay so if at all along with uh, the polymer chain along with the carbon and hydrogen if at all some other 
atom is present in the polymeric chain okay that will be undergoing degradation with the help of the functional group associated in the polymer chain okay so synthetic biodegradable uh, say condensation polymers are generally okay undergo biodegradation and uh, their extent of biodegradation uh, changes from you know one functional group to the another functional group so here from this we can understand that urethanes undergo readily biodegradation whereas uh, say this uh, 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 ether amide and ester they do, they will not be undergoing uh, degradation as that of the urethane and uh, here one more point is hydrophilic polymers degrade faster than the hydrophobic polymers the meaning of this is uh, hydrophilic uh, say means uh, water loving water loving polymers are undergoing degradation very rapidly compared to hydrophobic i mean water heating polymers okay so <coughs> usually uh, the polymers are you know balanced uh, uh, they are they are having well balanced uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the engineering of the polymer itself is made in such a way that there will be appropriate hydrophilic nature and well as well as hydrophobic nature and uh, <coughs> whenever we say the biodegradable polymer okay simply water soluble doesn't mean that it will be undergoing biodegradation sometimes uh, the biodegradation will be taking place by the hydrolysis or else by oxidation process okay the presence of hydrolyzable or oxidizable linkages in the polymer okay so like uh, amine group or oh group etc okay so ester group etc these you know uh, will be enable or these will be contributing for the uh, uh, biodegradation of uh, the polymer and uh, the functional group also decides uh, the hydrophilic nature or hydrophobic nature of the polymer if there are excessive say uh, oh groups or amine groups are pendant all along the polymer chain they will be possessing uh, the property of hydrophilicity okay so polysulfone is one of the examples for the hydrophobic polymer whereas uh, the polyvinyl alcohol or polyvinyl uh, pyrrolidon is an another example for hydrophilic polymer so biodegradable polymers can be divided into three classes uh, natural polymers and having their origination from the either plant or the, from the animal so starch is one such uh, example for the plant origin polymer collagen is the uh, one of the polymers having the origination in the animal and biosynthetic polymers produced by fermentation process and uh, uh, particularly by the microorganisms example polyhydroxy alkanoates so these are the polymers so they can be synthesized by fermentation process and uh, certain polymers are processed and uh, say from uh, the bio resources as the origin they will be processed to form the polymers and for example here lact polylactic acid is there lactic acid is the you know fermentation product and it will be polymerized to obtain polylactic acid so therefore this is a synthetic polymer okay uh, by making use of bio resource so let us try to understand in detail about uh, the polylactic acid so <coughs> polylactic acid in short we wrote is uh, we wrote as pla it is a biodegradable thermoplastic and uh, it is having you know uh, renewable resources resource that me i mean it is uh, prepared from the starch or from the sugar cane okay so lactic acid actually you know it is uh, the fermentation product as i said from 
either from the sugar cane or from the starch and later on you know the conversion of uh, uh, this particular uh, lactic acid into polylactic acid will be you know uh, uh, explained it will be well explained here in the next uh, say particular slide uh, along with the scheme now you know uh, to make uh, the catalytically dimerized uh, uh, lactic acid is catalytically dimerized to make uh, the lactide uh, monomer and the lactide later on undergoes a ring opening uh, you know polymerization to form polylactic acid so this is the scheme here so in this scheme when you are looking here the corn sugar cane corn or sugar cane okay it is subjected to fermentation process it will be taking a, a long time as you know already fermentation process with the help of uh, enzymes as a catalyst and there will be the formation of uh, lactic acid. So once uh, the lactic acid is formed here you see this is a COOH group and this is a OH group. COOH is a carboxylic acid group and OH is hydroxyl group both are you know present in a single say particular moiety and uh, one uh, say lactic acid uh, say one such lactic acid you imagine here and uh, COOH will be interacting with OH. I mean carboxylic acid interacts with alcohol group this is uh, going to form an ester linkage okay. So, this is a transesterification reaction in simple whenever the transesterification uh, reaction takes place the carboxylic acid reacts with alcohol to form salt and water. So, here <coughs> this polylactic acid ok, so it is uh, going to undergo it will be undergoing a polymerization and uh, it will be carried out around 200 to 250 degree centigrade around uh, 6 to 8 hours it will be carried out and there will be the formation of uh, oligolactic acid. Once this is formed, okay, so it is further heated and uh, around 260 degree centigrade and we will be getting lactide, okay, this is the lactide and this is having you know uh, closed uh, say structure. And uh, if you just you know with the help of the microwaves if you pass through and uh, you, if you keep uh, temperature around 130 to 150 degree centigrade for 3 hours continuously if you pass then we will be able to obtain polylactic acid which is having high molecular weight. Whereas this oligolactic acid it is having low molecular weight okay this is one route. Another way is when you take the lactic acid, if you continuously pass through microwaves for about 3 to 4 hours, we will be able to get directly polylactic acid which is a high molecular weight. So, thus, okay, so this from the sugar cane that is sugar cane juice or fermentation of the sugar cane, okay, we will be able to obtain lactic acid and through this uh, either uh, say uh, through the oligolactic acid uh, to lactide and uh, to the polylactic acid this is one way of uh, arriving at the polylactic acid another one way is directly you know so uh, by passing the microwaves to arrive at the polylactic acid. So <coughs> with this uh, okay I think uh, you have understood uh, this uh, polylactic acid uh, preparation and now <coughs> schematically also I have shown very uh, once again I made an effort here. So, there will be the elimination of water molecule. Okay. So, when there will be an interaction of uh, this carboxylic acid group with OH of another lactic acid. Okay. So, this OH and this H will be eliminating and there will be the linkage established here to form a lactide and further when it is subjected to heat okay so there will be the formation of polylactic acid 
and uh, this is the ester linkage okay so through which uh, okay the polymerization will be continuously happening okay so now let us look into the properties of a polylactic acid it is a linear thermoplastic polymer it has a around 30% of 37% of crystallinity any polymer you take it is having the crystalline region as well as amorphous region whichever dominates that decides the property of a polymer if the crystallinity decides okay one sort of polymer will be having and uh, amorphous only if it is possessing that it will be possessing another sort of you know properties and uh, the glass transition temperature it is in the range of 50 to 80 degree centigrade usually you will find you know uh, for uh, perfect crystalline uh, substances there will be a sharp, sharp melting uh, temperature okay there will uh, there will be a short melting short uh, exactly the uh, you know you will be having the melting point for the crystalline substance but for the amorphous or else the mixture of uh, crystallinity and amorphous uh, nature of the say substance like polymers you know you will not be having exact melting point you will be having a range of melting point temperature so on that basis if you look into the lactic acids melting point range it will melts in the range of uh, 170 to 180 degree centigrade and uh, applications of polylactic acid polylactic acid has got wide variety of applications it is uh, mainly used in uh, biomedical application as suitors okay so uh, as well as you know eluting uh, say stunt and dialysis uh, say media as well as in uh, drug delivery devices only for the basic reason that it is a biodegradable polymer okay so if it is entered into the body okay uh, in the form of uh, say drug carrying uh, say uh, agent okay so it will carry the uh, drug to the action of site and then you know it will be undergoing degradation it will be going out of the body in the form of the urine okay or sweat so <clears throat> it can be used in the preparation of bioplastics also which are useful for food packaging you know food packaging uh, you know uh, if it is uh, uh, done by you know biopolymer there will not be any say sort of uh, uh, food uh, uh, quality variation otherwise you know it will be affected a lot due to the synthetic polymers in the hot condition okay so i have summarized the entire uh, you know biomedical applications of uh, polylactic acid in this particular slide look into in the tissue engineering okay so three dimensional uh, electrospun okay so fibrous scaffolds uh, are uh, used for the regeneration of the bone and uh, drug delivery so in the drug delivery field in the form of the microspheres as well as micro capsules and uh, in the form of the nanoparticle drug you know it is uh, used and uh, in implants okay so uh, implants usually done uh, okay so orthodontics uh, is one of the say uh, field where the implants are used uh, implants are made much fixation of fractured bones also okay so uh, in the form of the plates pins screws and wires polylactic acid can be made okay made, made use okay so here other uh, usage also uh, usages are nothing but the drug eluting stunt and then bio adsorbable uh, polymer and then medical implants and then sutures in dermatology so you can say that you know this polylactic acid has got extensive applications in 
biomedical field. Now, <coughs> after having understood the necessity of uh, biodegradable polymers in our day to day life, okay, having uh, one of the examples for our study that is polylactic acid, which you have understood as a promising material for future Okay. So, in elevating uh, the dominance of synthetic polymers, now okay, so we are going to understand the another uh, say very promising materials in our uh, upcoming days, they are nanomaterials. So, nanomaterials are gaining significant uh, say uh, importance in the technological field particularly due to their tunable properties, either in terms of chemical properties or in terms of physical properties as well as mechanical properties. We can, we, we will be able to tune up, tune up means uh, according to our requirement, we are able to obtain okay, such a particular material with the help of uh, nanotechnology that made. Okay, so, uh, all the researchers to think you know, innovatively to obtain as much as possible the materials which are going to be enhancing the comforts and uh, improving the quality of uh, our uh, human life. <coughs> Nano materials, what are these? These are very, very tiny materials and uh, in, sh in simple way what, what we can tell. Nanomaterials, they are commonly defined as materials with uh, an average size less than 100 nanometers. Okay. So, what do you mean? Either in terms of uh, say length or breadth or height. Okay. In any one of the dimensions, it has to, pos it has to possess you know, less than 100 nanometer, then it is qualified to say that as the nano material. Okay. The word Nano is originated from the Greek language nanos, okay, which means a dwarf, small. Okay. However, in scientific language, okay, it is a, a prefix when okay, we are going to use a 1 billionth that is 10 to the power of minus 9. For example, 10 to the power of minus 6 is used for millimeter. Okay. In the similar fa fashion, 10 to the power of minus 9 is expressed as nanometer Nm. Okay. So, therefore, 1 nanometer is 1 billionth of a meter. Okay. It is uh, 1 nanometer is equal to 10 to the power of minus 9 meter. Okay. I think uh, this is sufficient uh, say for you to have the minimum uh, basic understanding of these polymers. However, uh, I would like to recall now, you know, Feniman, who is the you know pioneer or uh, worker of uh, worker of this uh, say uh, nanomaterials. He quoted that you know there is much space or there is much room at the bottom. Okay, at the bottom means uh, say uh, at the uh, very very uh, smaller uh, say dimension materials. Okay, if you understand, uh, there is much scope for the development was the meaning of his uh, say quotation. And uh, now, <coughs> would like to understand the beauty of uh, you know nanomaterials, why it is going to be very considered as very important. So, for our bare eye, whatever the things we look, okay, so this we consider particularly this is a zinc oxide. For our bare eye okay, or naked eye, it is uh, simply a powdery form, uh, you know, one of the substance. But the same, when you look under transverse electron microscope, which can magnify to the greater extent, to the greater extent means uh, which will be, you know, seeing the materials at the nano level. We will be seeing the material in terms of millimeters. Okay. So, or else you know the paper uh, whatever we just use, it is having micrometer say around 60 nano micro, uh, 60 micrometer or 70 micrometer we may be 
the notebook pages are there okay we will be able to operate with those only but we will not be able to see or visualize okay so this uh, nano material size with the naked eyes but it is possible to view under this tel uh, uh, transverse electron microscope when this zinc oxide is subjected to you know the study under this uh, tem okay so see beautifully you know this is the flower structure and uh, this is a uh, you know uh, the much more magnified uh, say look and you will be able to obtain okay by having the you know uh, variation of a sub, a certain uh, preparation conditions you will be able to arrive at the rod like or dot like you know zinc oxide okay so you can tune up you can tune up uh, uh, during the preparation of the material even the G same zinc oxide you will be able to you know have the different uh, sized or different shaped say nano materials and uh, if you are thinking that uh, nano technology or nano materials are very new new class of materials no okay nano materials were existing in in a previous uh, say years also but we termed the you know we coined the new term nano material for that the term itself is new for, new only okay so uh, you, uh, you you know the lotus surface of the lotus is having nano pores in it therefore okay it uh, uh, it possesses you know such a wonderful uh, surface okay so it will not be you know uh, even uh, amidst the mud if it is present it uh, no part of the mud is sticking to the surface of the petal of uh, lotus okay so the same has been excellently understood and applied by a particular private car manufacturer and they have designed such a surface for their own car okay I, uh, to the best of uh, my knowledge nissan car uh, it has developed uh, you know uh, dust free surface uh, for its uh, car <coughs> that's a uh, dust free is uh, possible by understanding the nano structure of the you know uh, materials and uh, nano surface are going to be expelling uh, you know all the dust as well as the dirt okay therefore they were able to uh, manufacture such a wonderful uh, uh, surface uh, of the car and uh, now nano dimension comparison in order to have a proper understanding or uh, in order to make you know uh, some uh, imagination we needed to have some comparison so diameter of hydrogen atom okay so it is about 0.1 nanometer okay diameter means uh, <coughs> you know very well okay so if it is the atom the distance from here to here is the diameter so this diameter okay so for the hydrogen is 0.1 nanometer if you just join such a, you know hydrogen atoms in 10 number of hydrogen atoms join in line then the entire length is going to make 1 nanometer okay so i think uh, now you will be able to understand the dimension of nanometer and then <coughs> we would like to take you know another example silicon okay so silicon uh, uh, atom if you are going to take you know five silicon atoms uh, if you align together in a single line then you will be able to arrive at one nanometer okay so here if you just uh, take uh, a human hair okay so human hair uh, if you study under the transverse electron microscope it is having 20000 nanometer in its diameter it possesses 20000 nanometer means uh, it is much more uh, you know bulkier than hydrogen atom you can say okay so a nanometer is one millionth of a millimeter approximately okay so one billion times smaller than the diameter of a human hair 
okay if you consider dna molecule okay D, uh, dna molecule it is uh, measuring around uh, 2.5 nanometer okay so even human red blood cell also it is uh, ranging from 1.5 to 2.5 nanometer okay so classification of uh, nanomaterials whenever we just uh, start studying any of the subjects or any of the like fuels or like polymers okay classification of those uh, has to be made very systematically so classification of the nanomaterials can also be you know uh, made very systematically so nanomaterials uh, okay so they are having a zero dimensional one dimensional two dimensional etc okay so uh, they can be existing in a single or in aggregated or agglomerated form to form spherical tubular as well as uh, many of the irregular shaped uh, you know nanomaterials okay so uh, which are called as uh, say um, 3d nanomaterials and uh, quantum dots quantum dots means uh, any of the nanomaterial having the dimension less than 10 nanometer either in le uh, you know in uh, length breadth and width okay in all the three dimension it has to possess less than 10 nanometer uh, dimension then they are called as uh, quantum dots okay so <coughs> richard siegel has uh, you know helped he has worked in the beginning to make a systematic classification of nanomaterials he suggested you know one can go for the classification of the nanomaterials okay on the basis of their dimensions okay so zero dimensional uh, nanomaterials one dimensional uh, nanomaterials two dimensional nanomaterials likewise you know we are having three dimensional nano structures also okay so here one dimension means uh, nano materials which are having you know there are always you know three dimensions length breadth and uh, length breadth and height all these three okay so are going to decide the material whether it is zero dimensional one or it is one dimensional etc if uh, all these length breadth and height are going to be less than 100 nanometer in their dimensions they are referred as zero dimensional nanomaterials okay so i said quantum dots in all these three dimensions length breadth and height if they do possess less than 10 nanometer okay they are called as quantum dots and one dimensional uh, say polymers nanomaterials having less than 100 nanometer okay in any of the two dimensions in uh, here zero dimension all the three dimensions should be less than 100 nanometer and here in one dimensional polymers okay so we needed to have any of the two dimensions less than 100 nanometer like uh, length and breadth okay so our height and bread, uh, uh, width okay length should be length may be more than 100 nanometer okay so likewise any of the two parameters are lying well within 100 nanometer they are going to be referred as uh, two dimensional nano materials and uh, three dimensional nano materials means uh, here either zero dimensional or uh, packed together or stacked together in all the three dimensions to grow a particular material and uh, that is called uh, that is called as a three dimensional one or else sometimes one may go for usage of uh, you know one dimensional material okay stacking of two di one dimensional material one over the other can arrive at you know the three dimensional uh, nano structure in the similar way two dimensional nano material or in the for in the mixture form also i mean two dimensional as well as zero, zero dimensional materials are you know kept together to form 
a three dimensional structure okay sometimes all the three zero dimensional one dimensional and as well as two dimensional nano materials are put together to form the three dimensional nano structures okay so let us understand uh, you know these by having uh, the visualization in the form of the picture so these uh, dots these are having less dimension uh, lesser you know less than 100 nanometer in all the three dimensions these are called as uh, you know uh, zero dimensional uh, say nano materials you can look here okay so these are like you know dots dots or points here one dimensional nano fibers okay so i mean any of the two dimensions here breadth and uh, width two dimensions are less than 100 nanometer length is you know more than 100 nanometers okay this is uh, more than 100 nanometer okay so therefore this is uh, called as a uh, one dimensional nano fiber and uh, whereas here two dimensional these are in the form of the sheets okay so one of the parameters is uh, you know uh, one of the dimensions is more than uh, say 100 nanometer and uh, these are you know three dimensional nano materials okay so sometimes uh, this type of the particles are you know aggregated to form you know three dimensional structures or such type of the sheets are piled up one over the another to form such type of the 3d nano materials okay we have i think you have understood uh, what are uh, uh, the zero dimensional polymers uh, zero dimensional nano materials and one dimensional nano materials two dimensional nano materials as well as three dimensional nano materials overall i think you have well understood regarding the classification of the nano materials now <coughs> we can uh, visualize here uh, core shell uh, can be embedded with uh, a nano particle and then you know nano particle can be encapsulated in a hollow nano sphere as well as sometimes you can obtain a composite uh, nano particle in a say single uh, core and all these are considered as a you know zero dimensional one and uh, carbon nanotubes it is going to form okay one dimensional uh, uh, nano material and uh, here this is in the form of uh, say nano wire okay so this is in the form of a nano wire array okay in which you know you can embed uh, the zero dimensional nano materials also and uh, here two dimensional uh, nano materials you will be just uh, these are the different uh, graphene based composite composite means uh, yesterday I have uh, understood both the matrix and fiber will be there and here these particles are reinforced uh, between two sheets to form you know graphene based composites and uh, carbon coated uh, nano plates okay so here these are uh, once again two dimensional uh, materials and uh, carbon coat, uh, coated uh, nano bells okay these are also two dimensional one and uh, now here three dimensional uh, say materials each say there are uh, seven uh, single uh, say uh, carbon uh, uh, one dimensional carbon uh, nano materials in the form of the wire are aggregated to generate okay uh, mesoporous ca composite electrode here and uh, this one also okay so uh, microporous composite electrode it is uh, you know having you know nano particles in it uh, and this is you know uh, stacked together to form the three dimensional uh, nano material okay so these are the various uh, you know visualizations which through which you can understand uh, the distinction between zero dimensional one dimensional two dimensional as well as three dimensional nano materials <coughs> now let us try to understand the various uh, properties of nano materials 
nanomaterials they have got the variety of uh, structural features in between the size of uh, atoms and the bulk materials atom size you know hydrogen atom only the example if you consider which is a very very smaller atom in the periodic table okay so that is having 0.1 nanometer dimension okay so these nanomaterials are having the dimensions in between bulk material as well as the atoms okay so <clears throat> the properties of uh, the materials with the nano nanometer uh, dimensions are significantly different from those of bulkier corresponding material okay so this is mainly due to the size of the material which render okay variety of uh, say uh, prop, uh, variety of properties over the surface of a metal so nanomaterials so like you know first one is a larger fraction of surface atoms are going to be existing in the nano size compared to the count, its counterpart of the bulk material and the high surface energy is operated over the surface of the nano materials and then there will be special confinement and reduced imperfection which you will not be able to see in the bulkier nano material therefore nano material are going to be exhibiting variety of uh, different uh, say properties due to these reasons let us let us try to understand okay how does large fraction of surface of uh, atoms are going to be available at the nano size okay so the properties of nano materials okay so they are going to be uh, differing as the size approaches to nano scale and as a result of this the surface over the surface of the materials okay so you will be going to observe more number of uh, edges and corners etc compared to the bulk material and therefore the surface fraction uh, 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 large fraction of uh, surface is going to be uh, available by for the nano material compared to bulk material and uh, high surface energy okay so if uh, you consider the any of the surfaces okay over the surface van der waal forces are operating and uh, when you are going to reduce its size the surface area goes on increases therefore the surface energy associated with those particle also goes on increases so therefore entirely you know in all the dimensions okay in the height and width and breadth in all the three dimensions uh, you know you will be having more uh, operations of uh, energy over its surface leading to enhancement of higher energy over the surface and spatial confinement and reduced imperfections spatial confinement means bulkier material suppose in a room like if you imagine your classroom okay so if uh, the classroom is of uh, you know it is my imagination that's all exact uh, dimensions you know it is left to otherwise instead of classroom you imagine a room where okay so uh, 10 by 10 area is there okay so 10 is a height and 10 is a width and 10 uh, is the breadth okay so this type of you know uh, particular room 10 into 10 into 10 will be 1000 you know if it is in terms of meter cube 1000 meter cube is the volume in this if you fill the number of balloons with the dia 10 10 meter as the dia okay so count the number simply then and uh, later okay you take 1 uh, meter dia balloons okay so immediately you will come to know the difference in the Our volume remains same. Volume remains same. That is, room volume remains same. 
but the number of accommodating balloons will be enhanced and the gap between each of the balloons will be also great to the greater extent that has, that will be reduced okay so the imperfection reduction means uh, exactly this is the same in the atom okay whatever due to the size of the atoms okay some imperfections or say some spatial uh, uh, some space is available in, in between two atoms that is going to be reduced drastically when you reduce the size from bulk material to nano material <coughs> and then you know uh, spatial confinement would like to understand in such a way that if you take uh, say around uh, say 10 uh, centimeter of uh, metallic uh, object okay so in the metal electrons are delocalizing from uh, one point to the another point they will be hopping from one particular end to the another particular end if you go on reduce the size of that one to the nano size the electron will have lesser chance for its delocalization you are going to restrict the moment of the electrons when you arrive at the nano size that itself is called as you know confinement okay so the imperfections uh, are going to be reduced and uh, say confinement will be happening and uh, due to that various properties are going to be arising see here suppose if you are taking a uh, say the conductor i mean some uh, metallic part uh, metal only you are going to take and when you are going to reduce the size from bulkier size to nano size when you are just making it what happens in the metal or else uh, in, in the semiconductor only, semiconductor you imagine in the semi in the metal what happens this uh, conduction band and valence band uh, both they will be overlapping each other in the semiconductor there will be a gap okay so this gap okay by providing certain energy to the valence uh, say this is a valence band okay so here if you provide some energy then the uh, by gaining the electron uh, energy by the electron it will be jumping to the next available energy that is conduction band okay so here as the size goes on reduces what happens band gap also goes on increases to such an extent if you arrive at the nano size there will be huge gap between the valence band and the conduction band this go you know changes the material property from semiconductivity to insulator you have arrived when you have reduced the dimension of bulky material okay into nano material this is how okay we are going to you know observe many of the uh, properties and uh, in our uh, next class we are going to you know study the surf uh, size dependent properties like uh, surface properties and uh, you will be studying uh, optical properties and you will be studying uh, catalytic properties as well as you know you will be studying uh, say thermal properties and uh, you will be studying magnetic properties and mechanical properties uh, i think you know uh, all of us uh, shall eagerly wait okay for the next section to begin because uh, we are yet to understand much more about nanomaterials Thank you.